This is Andrew Green from Google. Today we'll be discussing enterprise search from Google. In addition to my own material, we'll also be hearing from Kim Nagard from Google Enterprise Search Partner Fishful Solutions and Google Search Appliance customer Sean Matson from Hitachi Data Systems. Uh, time for question and answer will be made available uh, in the end. Next slide. Um, before I begin, let me take a few steps back to introduce Google Enterprise. Uh, as a standalone co company, we're one of the top 20 suppliers of software, and we rank even higher amongst enterprise software companies. And we're growing faster than any of these companies. So reading left to right on this slide, um, Google Apps is a cloud-based productivity suite that helps your employees connect to get the work done from anywhere, any device. Maps for Business, or, or Visualize, allows your employees to visualize business data and make better decisions uh, and optimize people and assets using the world's most popular map. Google Platform lets you build, deploy, scale, and manage applications, websites, and services on the same infrastructure that runs Google. Google Enterprise Search lets you quickly connect to your customers and employees uh, to the information they care about. Uh, finally, Access, uh, or Chrome for Business, brings the full power and speed, mobility, and mobility of the web to cloud applications to your company. So back to Google Enterprise Search or Find, uh, Google Enterprise Search has the same mission as Google, to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible uh, and useful. And this will be the focus of uh, today's discussion. So staying on this slide, uh, search has always been the cornerstone of Google's business, and we're constantly innovating to improve our systems to find new and compelling ways to apply it. Uh, next slide. Um, employees' expectations of search at work has changed, and search, uh, uh, or rather technology at work has changed, and search is a great example of this. Uh, we've become accustomed to opening a web browser, typing in a Google search box, whatever it is that we're interested in, or even just speak a question and get the information we need. Uh, it's not surprising when we find uh, the most relevant result right away. It's, it's expected. We live in a world today of I know what I want and I want it now on any device at any time. And Google answers this expectation. Uh, next slide. So with, with uh, Google Enterprise Search, we can use the same technology that we know and love in our consumer lives. Google is the recognized leader in search and the Google Enterprise Search platform uh, brings the power of Google.com to the enterprise in the convenient form of a pre-tuned search platform. Next slide. So this is uh, one of the key elements that we're going to discuss today. Uh, but consider, uh, what if the internet was broken into seven different pieces, each with its own search bar that worked differently, which had various levels of uh, relevance? Uh, that's what uh, many of you are asking your business users to do every day. So one of the great things about Google.com is it searches all over the Internet. Uh, so with the Google Search Appliance, we apply that same idea of universality uh, to the enterprise. Um, uh, uh, today's discussion will go deeper into a connector integration solution developed by Google Enterprise Partner Fishbowl Solutions to integrate content from Oracle Web Center content into the Google Search Appliance. Hitachi Data Systems will also present how they've deployed a Google Search Appliance with Fishbowl's connector solution to produce a resource library solution for their user community to access in a self-service fashion. Uh, next slide. Google's relevancy philosophy is to, make, um, uh, uh, is to make relevance work out of the box with minimal tuning or optimization by administrators or users. We want it to just work. So the Google Search Appliance can analyze user behavior at your company, capturing the wisdom of your users based on watching their behavior and automatically determining what to rank at the top. So over time, relevance will get better and better and enable employees or users to work even more productively. Next slide. And in some cases, you might not want every employee or user to be able to search everything. That's why the Google Search Appliance gives IT managers or business managers the ability to ensure that the right people get to search the right things. 
the Google Search Appliance is designed to utilize and leverage your security pro protocols and policies so that employees can access only what their enterprise credentials allow. Uh, the Google Search Appliance is designed to provide search results to match the user privileges across all systems and do so providing high-speed results. Um, very quickly on, on, on this slide here, the Google Search Appliance also takes um, advantage of Google's unmatched language capabilities. Uh, Google Translate further offers free translation between 71 different languages. And this can make a huge difference for your businesses operating in today's global market, where a lot of the content you need may not exist in your primary language. Next slide. We've also made the Google Search Appliance easy to set up uh, and scale within your organization. The Google Search Appliance deployment ar architecture is straightforward and includes automatically tuned hardware and software. This means you get out-of-the-box relevancy uh, on day one. And, and uh, we have a couple different models. No need to overspend for a system or license you don't need. Our base model can index up to 20 million documents and our larger model can index up to 100 million documents on a single machine. Next slide. We have very strong market leadership within the enterprise with over 5 million businesses having gone Google. And our uh, customers speak for themselves um, uh, uh, in terms of trusting Google uh, with their business needs. Next slide. And furthermore, um, with respect to search, Gartner has ranked Google Enterprise Search in its magic, magic quadrant uh, for this year. Next slide. So I'd like to close out my piece uh, and introduce Sean Matson from Hitachi Data Systems, who will speak to a search-centered application uh, that has been built to address um, Hitachi's user community needs for self-service resource library. Thank you much, uh, Adam, and for the introduction. Let me just pull up my slides here. All right, as Adam mentioned, uh, first off, hello, everybody. <laughs> as Adam mentioned, uh, my name is Sean Matson. I'm the Senior Director of Global Web Marketing here at Itachi Data Systems. Um, so for us, we are responsible primarily for the online customer experience. That would include um, our, our corporate .com site, um, all our geo sites, and the hundreds of microsites we deploy around marketing activities. But we're also um, responsible for a lot of the technology um, that is <coughs> used to enable marketing and sales. So we also sort of um, consider ourselves almost an, an IT hybrid. Um, more, more like an, an agile IT department. So we, we manage the, the primary CMS platform, which is Oracle. Um, we manage the marketing automation platforms, globalization, localization, um, and a lot of the analytics and, and some of the, just the production around the web and, and updating the website. So marketing operations also. We've, um, we've had a good and long relationship with uh, both Google and Fishbowl. Fishbowl helped us with a lot of development um, on our UCM application. And, <clears throat> and Google, uh, we had GSA uh, powering our .com for, for many years, even though it might have been underutilized. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump into one of the challenges that we had, and I think for a lot of companies and a lot of businesses, um, it's around content and the amount of content that's created and then um, deployed someplace or published to some environment um, without a lot of thought into how to manage the life cycle of that content. And, you know, uh, at HDS a couple of years ago, we found ourselves in, in, in a pretty big predicament around that where we had a lot of people muddling through content instead of finding content and really um, had a lot of uh, challenges around version control and what was the latest and greatest and what's the single source of truth and what can we share with um, external versus internal folks and, 
so we sort of had a big, a big mess. Um, and I think one of the, you know, one of the real ways to identify if you're in a really big mess would be just to go and try and do something simple and find something simple. I remember going to our intranet and trying to find uh, the holiday schedule for HDS. And no matter what search term I, I used, I could not get it to come up. I, I think in the end I managed to get uh, the holiday schedule for 2006 in Australia or something. But, but when, you, when you see situations like that where people need to access content every day and they just can't get to it, um, you know you have a big problem. So you know, some of our um, issues and challenges were years of content being dumped into multiple repositories. So we had a lot of sort of CMS type applications and, and a lot of different flavors and, and, um, and the, the, these assets would get published to uh, multiple uh, repositories through through direct channels. So not just multiple renditions of the same asset, but actually the same asset repeated over and over. So you have duplication. Uh, when you do that, you, you really lose control of your ability to um, define what's the correct version of that. Um, we also had uh, very little meta tagging and um, optimization for search on the content. Um, and maybe I should step back and define there's, there's content that's created all the time in businesses, but I'm really focused on what is official content. So once content gets sanctioned and is going to be used by the business for something, for marketing purposes, for sales, whatever that is, it needs another level of control, and that's really what uh, we were missing here. So, you know, that sort of paradigm that we had with this um, lack of management of our content spilled over um, to our external customer base. And uh, our extranet was experiencing a lot of uh, content sprawl also. Uh, the search wasn't really performing the way it was, so our, our customers were having a real time getting the uh, technical and support documentation that they needed. And I think that's a real red flag. You know, once you start to frustrate your customer base, um, you're really going to see some impact on the business. So, you know, there's, a, there's so many issues and challenges that come up with content um, and content sprawl and, and just uh, content dumps that, um, you know, it's very pervasive, but it is something that, that we, should, uh, we should all be very aware of. So we looked at it and we decided that we needed to do something about it. So um, I'm going to go straight into sort of how we approached uh, the challenge. And again, this is not the whole story, but it's, it's a good part of it. And, um, and then I'll go quickly into a demo about how we're using that externally, too. So uh, the first thing that we decided to do was initiate a single repository strategy. That means focusing on a single CMS, a single repository where we can uh, basically deposit all the official assets that we're going to use. Um, this is a big step. It, 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 it changed the business process for a lot of business units, and we really had to get a coordinated effort. Um, so what, we built a gateway, a portal, sort of a, a publishing portal that sits on top of our CMS, and that portal um, was a self-service portal, but it, 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 it made the user add uh, tags to that and sort of define the behavior and the life cycle of that asset uh, or content. So, you know, where is it going to be published to? How long is it valid for? Is it going to expire at any time? And then um, what is it, what is category is it so, so that we can find it later? Where does it belong and how will it be referenced? So we started to put together um, an application, a portal that would help us do that. So now the content is going into a single repository and um, it's getting tagged uh, at a minimal level by the, um, by the content producers. Um, what we did see was that we had GSA um, already. We were using it for our corporate.com, but we saw that it was very underutilized. So we wanted to expand the use of GSA. Um, what this does, it has a lot of advantages. For one thing, um, it means that you're searching the same way across all your platforms and all your environments where you might have content. So by connecting you know, some of these um, environments and sort of trying to um, 
work towards unification of environments, but that's always very difficult. Um, we, we sort of federated the, the use of our GSA to some of our other internal web platforms um, and our, you know, semi-external uh, web platforms. So we, we really wanted to expand the usage of GSA. What that also allowed us to do was expand our process that was already in place around search engine optimization. So we had a team that was working full time on the dot com to, um, to help make sure that all the content on the dot com is optimized. Well, we just decided to roll that into all the documentation that was being produced for marketing and sales so that now, even if it's an internal document, it's still optimized uh, for search and findability. Um, one of the key cornerstones to this was to dis deploy Fishbowl's GSA connector to really help us tightly integrate with our CMS, our primary CMS system and some of the auxiliary CMS systems. So really leveraging that um, connection is helped us um, in, a, in many ways, but you know, Fishbowl is a great product um, and it also helped us to deploy this a lot sooner than we might have been without a connector or having to build something ourselves. So, and um, Fishbowl is gonna get into the technical details of the connector after I'm done here. Uh, then we really need to look at our um, external customer base and also figure out how we were going to satisfy their needs also. Um, and again, along the lines of just growing this, this process and, and really honing in and defining this single source of truth, uh, we reached out to the tech publications group um, who was also has their own systems and everything like that. and and their own process and says, can we connect this process and create you know, sort of a supply chain into our CMS um, and then start to push that out publicly to our external customer base. The challenge with technical documents, I think, is that every time there's a software update, the, tech, the document needs to be updated. So there's a lot of versions and not everybody updates their software or hardware. So you have to make all the versioning available. Uh, for us, that was one of the hurdles that we had to overcome in helping to define that publishing process. And then finally, we wanted to redesign the resource library to provide a much better uh, customer experience. And as you'll see, we did get a little bit um, whimsical with it too. Um, and there also the technical assets, a lot of them are generally uh, just not listed anywhere. So we really wanted to make sure that they were findable through search, which, as Adam mentioned earlier, is really the way, the new way people um, are finding things. And it's really the go-to action that people take first when they're, and foremost when they're trying to find anything. So that's really it, just a quick overview of um, some of the challenges we overcame and, and how we did that. And um, again, I'm available for questions at the end, but I am going to right now do a quick little showing of our resource library. And sorry, it's on the other tab here. So this is our uh, launch, our resource library that we launched last year. A couple things here that are um, a little bit different, I think, is one is we preload all the assets. So um, when you get to the page, um, the assets are, are already there available, so if you want to browse, you can browse. Um, we have exposed some of the features from uh, GSA and leveraged some of the Fishbowl connector features here to, to sort of augment the experience. So we have our search filter, which is a quick uh, filter and uses our taxonomy and um, GSA's dynamic menuing to, to, to sort of help us um, display this and allow people quick access to docs if they know exactly what they want. Um, we've also exposed some analytics here, so you can see all the assets if you want, which is how it's preloaded. Um, we do have assets in other languages, so you can uh, change the language down in this filter if you want. We also show our three most popular search terms here. So if you just want to, you know, look at what is the most popular or sort the entire asset library um, by the most popular you can do that too. Um, we put in a little preview button here, so if you want to just make sure that it is your correct asset, um, we can, you can happily take a quick view. And finally, we put this little link on here for people to 
um, you know, demonstrates people how to use the page. Again, this is sort of the whimsical aspect. Um, and we're constantly looking for feedback and tweaking this to uh, sort of meet the needs of our customer base. So that's really it for me. Um, I'm going to turn it back um, to Fishbowl right now, or Adam. Um, and thank you very much. Thanks so much, Sean. Uh, we're going to now hear from Kim, who is a product manager at Fishbowl Solutions. Fishbowl developed the Oracle Web Center content connector solution that was used with the search appliance for Hitachi's uh, use case. Kim, the time is yours. Thanks, Andrew. And thanks, Sean, for uh, sharing your story. Uh, so as Andrew mentioned, my name is Kim Negard, and I'm the product manager for um, Fishbowl GSA connectors. So before we dive in to the, before we dive too much into the connector, I did just want to provide a brief overview of who Fishbowl is. So as Andrew mentioned, we are a Google partner. We're also an Oracle partner, and we specialize in services and software for both Oracle Web Center content as well as the Google Search Appliance. So we do have deep knowledge of both of those technologies. And our history is really in the Oracle Web Center content space. As Sean mentioned, we've been working with Hitachi um, on that platform for a while. We've been working with a number of customers on that platform. Um, I'm getting a message, Gina or Andrew, that people can't see the screen. Gina, the screen is down um, if you want to share your desktop. Just one moment. So yes, while she pulls that up, um, as I said, we our history is really rooted in the web center space. Uh, and we've been working with the product, I just want to mention, back to the days when it was Stellant and UCM. I know Sean used that term. So if you, if you use the product, if you use any of those names, Stellant, it was then acquired by Oracle. It's, it's really the same underlying technology. And the connector that I'm going to be talking about on the things you can do with it, it, it really we're talking about the same technology, whether you're calling it UCM or whether you're calling it web center content. And our mission um, as an organization is really to help customers solve frustrating and costly knowledge sharing problems by using world-class technology. And so that really ties into what we're talking about today, which is our connector for Oracle Web Center content. Next slide. So why integrate Google Search with Web Center? Why tie these two systems together? Um, and it really goes back to our history working with Oracle. As Sean mentioned, um, one of the things that they experienced was people just couldn't find things. And even most basic things, there were problems finding that content. And that's something that we've heard for a long time from many Oracle Web Center customers. It's one of the top complaints is that search doesn't work well out of the box, relevancy is poor, it's hard to find stuff. And as Andrew talked about, um, with Google, search isn't a feature. Google is search. And so by bringing the capabilities of the GSA into the Web Center space, you allow Web Center users to find things more easily, and you allow Google customers to take advantage of all the wealth of knowledge that exists in that Web Center repository by connecting the systems together. And so we then expose that content that's inside of Oracle Web Center. And so what is the connector? Um, Andrew alluded to this a little bit earlier in the presentation when he talked about the universality of the GSA. And so our connector is built on what's called the Google Connector Framework, and that's something that Google makes available to allow the GSA to integrate with systems that they couldn't otherwise get access to. And our connector uses that framework to connect the Google Search Appliance to the Oracle Web Center Content Repository. And so it's really what it provides for customers is two primary things, the first one being indexing. So with the GSA, we are able to get full text indexing of all the content residing in the Oracle Web Center repository. And that's going to let Web Center and Google customers take advantage of things like Google relevancy, Google's understanding of language and word proximity, and all the investments that they make in search that they glean from Google.com. That comes into your enterprise, and with the connector, you can use that against your Web Center content. Sean talked about the, the tagging and the metadata. Um, that's one of the things that makes a system like Oracle Web Center different from maybe a file system or a website is generally with, with Web Center content, you do have rich metadata. You have taxonomies and classifications that organizations have invested time and energy in putting on their content. 
And so with our connector, we make that, that information available to the GSA. So the GSA can know about all these facets and these classifications that you have that describe your information. And what we can do is we can use that to then enrich the search experience and take it to the next step. One of the things you can do with that metadata is the dynamic navigation. Sean showed an example of this on their resource library. All of those facets, all of those categorizations on the left-hand side, that's all Web Center metadata. And so by making that available to the GSA with Fishbowl's connector, you can then easily turn on Google's dynamic navigation and use that to build a really rich, um, dynamic search experience for your users. Our connector does use an incremental indexing approach. So all the content that is indexed, FG, if you could just go back to the previous slide. Thanks. Um, all the content that is indexed, that will be, um, that's going to happen more quickly than crawling. So it does a couple of things. Sean mentioned this idea of content that's not linked anywhere. Content that's not linked anywhere, content that resides in a CMS system like Oracle Web Center, the only way for the GSA to get at that is to use a connector that's then going to know when content's changing. It's going to provide that information to the search appliance and let that be indexed. We also provide processing for Site Studio websites. So if you're running your site on the Oracle Web Center platform using Site Studio, this is going to allow you to index that as well. I mean, a question I get a lot is, if I only want to index some of my content, can I do that? And the answer is absolutely. The connector is very flexible in which sets of content it's going to index for your particular use case. Next slide. So that's a little bit of background on the indexing piece. Um, the other part of the search experience is really um, the, the serving or the presentation layer. And so that's really how do we bring that full Google experience into the search. So Sean showed an example of this in the context of a website where users are searching um, on a website. It's, it feels very tightly integrated. It's a seamless search experience inside the HGS Corporate Resources page. Um, another place where we see this is customers who use Oracle Web Center natively through the web UI where they're checking out content, they're searching for things, and we want to be able to provide that same level of Google quality user experience inside of Oracle Web Center. So I will show a couple of screenshots um, about that. Obviously, Andrew alluded to the importance of security earlier. Um, our connector does fully support the Oracle Web Center security model. So security groups, accounts, ACLs, it's going to take all of that into account so that people are only seeing the content that they should, um, as well as um, providing that transparent, <coughs> excuse me, that transparent um, user experience between the content server and the GSA. Go ahead. So in the interest of time, I'm not going to go into a full demonstration um, of the connector out of the box UI, but I did want to point out a couple of things with some screenshots. This user in interface is something that we released this summer in the latest version of our connector. Um, and the intent, intent here is really to bring that full Google experience to search users, whether they're using a website or whether they're using Oracle Web Center content out of the box. So what you see here is what you get with the connector out of the box. It doesn't require any development. I mean, it takes advantage of a lot of the exciting things that Google has brought um, with GSA 7.0. So one of those you can see here on the screen is document previews. Um, Sean also showed a similar type of use case on his example where you want to allow users to figure out, you know, is this the document that I want before they actually click on it to really streamline and speed up that search process. And so with the GSA, 7.0, you can do um, high resolution, full page document previews. And so we have integrated that with our connector right into Web Center content to be able to find content more quickly. And I'm also showing another example here of the dynamic navigation. So that's the filtering that you're seeing on the left hand side. I mean, you can see it here in this screenshot as well. And so that's going to leverage all that metadata because the connector exposes that to the GSA. You can use that to change the way users search. So historically in Oracle Web Center and UCM, when people do searches, metadata is kind of this burdensome thing. They have to fill out a big clunky metadata search advanced search form. They don't really like it. They might not know what fields are in there. So in that way, metadata can almost hinder the way they want to do searches. This changes that user experience by letting people just type some words like they would on Google.com and then use all that rich metadata that you have inside your organization to then filter that down once you see your initial set of results. I mean, the last thing I did want to mention here is because 
this is all under under the covers running on the GSA. Oh, if you want to go back. Um, this allows you to not only expose the content that the connector has indexed from Oracle Web Center, but it also allows you to get access at the wealth of other information that might reside in your, in your repository. So it's really about that message of having one place that users can go, whether that's an employee inside your organization doing secure searches or whether that's somebody on a public website, creating that user experience that encompasses all of those use cases. So with this out-of-the-box UI, we allow you to bring in other collections of content that your GSA has indexed. And so right here you can see an example of we have content that's coming from Oracle with a little Oracle notated icon. We have content coming from SharePoint and content coming from a file system. And we're doing that all in one place from the context of, in this case, Oracle Web Center. So before we open it up for questions, um, I just wanted to come back and kind of summarize. We talked um, about the Oracle Web Center content connector that Fishbowl offers to let you index and then serve content from Web Center with the GSA. We also have a connector for YouTube. So for organizations who are investing marketing dollars in YouTube channels and creating videos, we allow you to then search those with the GSA and bring that into like an integrated web center or an integrated, excuse me, website search page so you're seeing video results alongside your web content. Uh, for those of you using Oracle Web Center Portal, we have a package to bring that um, Google search experience into the Web Center Portal environment as well as full service consulting team to do GSA deployments, Web Center deployments, or integrations between the two. So with that, I will turn it back over to Andrew and Gina, and we can open it up for questions. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, Sean, uh, again. And um, now the time is yours for questions of myself relating to the search appliance, Sean relating to his deployment, or Kim relating to the Fishbowl Solutions Connector uh, that was uh, developed for Oracle Web Center. Uh, I don't see any questions in the Q&A box now. Uh, if you have a question, please go ahead and submit one, and we can um, address these here on the call. Any questions? Uh, let me ask a question. Um, Sean, can you speak a little uh, again, perhaps, to some of the business results that you've seen from your deployment of a search-centric resource library for your user communities? Yeah, sure, sure. So I think, um, you know, internally as a company, we've we've we had this motto or sort of tagline that was going around once we started doing this, just to help people uh, remind them what this activity was doing, what this change in business process was, how it was helping them. So we started kind of telling people, stop, stop, stop muddling, stop searching, and start finding stuff. You know, so we said, stop, stop muddling and start finding, and that was kind of our our line that you know, sort of created a little, um, sort of a little bead inside the company to help people um, understand why we were changing the business process. And I think it shows that people are finding stuff now. You know, we've been looking at our analytics and we see um, easy, uh, we see a lot of downloads of, the, of stuff that, um, content and assets that, that before we used to get questions about or get emails about where to find that. Um, from an external standpoint, I was just reviewing the numbers last night. I mean, we've had thousands of downloads of our technical assets off our uh, .com site. And again, these are not listed on our .com. They're available through the resource library, and because they're so well optimized now for search, they're also primarily um, coming up in external Google searches. So that's really satisfying for us, and I think what we see is a lot, a lot less escalation for our partner portal around, you know, where can I find this, where can I find that? Because um, I used to get a lot of those emails, and we just see a, a huge drop in those, and we see uh, the numbers climbing in the downloads. So, you know, that's really a good indicator that people are finding what they need. Thanks, Sean. Um, so I want to end there, but let me close if there are additional questions uh, that 
We'll follow up via email so you have all of our contact information and we can address specific use case questions uh, that you may have. Uh, but with that, I want to thank everyone on the call for their time, but also our presenters' time, uh, Kim and Sean. And with this, we'll close the webinar. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Sean.